Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have a review for the third and the killer of the franchise for quite a while until last year, 2021. The 2014 film, VHS Viral. This is the third of the franchise, came out one year after VHS 2, so the series by this time, when this movie, as awful as it is, killed this franchise, the series was two years old. It came out in 2013, then you had the 2014 second film, then this piece of crap. Excuse me. The first one came out in 2012. I know I got the, the thing wrong, but the second one came out in 2013. This is 2014. Anyway, VHS Viral, as many of you know, is a found footage movie. Part of the VHS franchise It's fantastic. I really like and admire pretty much every film in this franchise except for this movie. Now, of course, we have VHS 99 coming out. I'm really excited for that as well. I just uploaded reviews for part one and part two. I hope you'll check those out as well in case you haven't. If this happens to be the first review you've seen from me, VHS Viral is one that I take as a deep personal cut, one that I hate deeply. VHS 1 and 2 are so good. They're really well made. They're really just fun. They have so many people behind the camera that really know what they're doing. And so many people that went on from both of those movies to have really good careers. This movie here, I know no one who directed it. I know no one who wrote it, as far as I can tell. Taking a brief glance over at IMDb. Um, viral just feels entirely cheap and VHS 1 had a cheap feel to it but in a really good way that really put limitations on the filmmakers to make something special and VHS 2 went a little bit higher up in the budget there was a little bit more CGI and that kind of thing that caused some issues there this film has way too much CGI and it's trying so hard it's about an hour and let's see an hour and 20 minutes so it's fairly short <laughs> I remember this coming out on, v on uh, DVD not VHS and I was so excited for it, I went out and bought a copy of it. And I've never in my life, until I saw Chris Stuckman's review, knew anything that, about this. I just knew it came out. And I knew he hated it, and I knew as I watched it, I hated it more and more as it went along. This one around uh, really only has about four shorts in the entire movie. And the premise is interesting enough until you get to the end. It's basically the wraparound story. And by the time that you get to the end of this wraparound story, unlike the first two films wraparound, or even the fourth one, 1994, um, when you get to the end of this wraparound, at the end of this movie, before the credits roll, it's so disappointing that I can't even recommend that. Usually, the wraparounds of VHS 1, 2, and 94 are typically, a lot of the time, my favorite segments of the entire movie because of the twists, the creepiness, the atmosphere le leading into watching each of the shorts. That is not the case with this particular movie. Uh, VHS Viral basically starts off with a fellow who's an amateur journalist of some sort, he uses a camera and whatever, and essentially... His uh, girlfriend gets kidnapped, or whatever she is, wife, fiance, I don't know. She gets kidnapped by an ice cream truck, and that goes terribly wrong. He's trying to track down the ice cream truck and stay up with it. There are people who are also getting involved and attacked by the ice cream truck. The police can't catch it. It's just on the run. Everybody's kind of waiting for it to either break down or crash or have somebody crash it. Something like that. Run out of gas? I don't know. Everybody's waiting for that to happen. And it's just kind of a menace. Things are going crazy. The town, at least certain areas, seem to be catching on fire. And the freaking ice cream truck won't stop. Nobody can tell if it's just stolen or whatever. But somehow it's connected to all of this. And it just gets worse in between each short and also at the end of the movie. Again, for the wraparound. There aren't any spoilers in this review. I'm not going to tell you too much. But just like I said, it had an interesting setup for this ice cream truck thing. And it has its moments throughout, uh, in between each short that they show. But by the end of the movie, it's so lame, <laughs> it's so dumb, and makes no sense. It's convoluted, and it's such a lackluster movie overall. Not just this short, but everything is so lackluster. You can't help but be disappointed as a VHS fan like myself. And at the time, VHS 1 and 2 were massive. This movie was so bad. It killed this franchise from 2014 till 2021 when Shudder bought the rights to it and made a new one. Of course, they're making their new new one called 22, or VHS 99, excuse me. And I really think that's going to be good because 94 was good. Um, the first story here, when I explain it to you, if you haven't seen this movie but you've seen the first two, you're going you're gonna to immediately understand <laughs> why it's bad. Uh, essentially, it is called Dante the Great. There's a fellow named Dante who gets like a magical cape, and all of a sudden he has these powers. It's like a weird Doctor Strange type thing before Doctor Strange came out, I believe. And this fellow has powers and abilities. He takes on an assistant, and he does impossible magic tricks as a magician that no one else can explain or anything. And this is a great example of the budget for CGI, at least within the budget of these directors, going too high, 
and there's too much of that throughout the entire film, but especially here, there's just too much, and it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Um, it's, it's weak, really weak. <laughs> it's not the weakest of the film. I'll talk about that later on, but it's a weak one, and it becomes this weirdo... It's, it's like it wants to be found footage, but it doesn't. It kind of cheats its way around with that. I think that sucks. It's not really fair. Um, and it looks and feels cheaper than the previous two movies. That's the worst offender of VHS viral. It just doesn't feel like a VHS movie. And moving along to the next short. Uh, this one is not completely awful. It's kind of horrifying, but it seems like it's drawn out a little bit much. It might be like a 25-minute short. I'm not really sure. This one is called Parallel Monsters, and I actually think this one has a cool setup. It's actually pretty neat for the most part. It has its flaws, but it's kind of probably my favorite short of this movie. That's not saying much, but it's it feels more traditional for the VHS types of movies. Whoever was involved with this, good job, I guess, to an extent. Parallel Monsters is essentially about a man making kind of a time machine, but not really a time machine. It kind of just opens up to a parallel dimension that might look exactly like our house. So for example, though, uh, if I had one right here at this wall, and I went in there, my couch would be on the opposite side of the wall from this, everything in my room would be on the opposite side of that, not identically as we have it right here. Like, if I have a lamp on this side, it's going to be on that side this time. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's kind of creepy because when he opens up his door, he has, like, his exact twin on the opposite side of the door opening his door. And they realize, as scientists, oh my god, we've opened up a, we've, we both at the same time have opened up a parallel dimension together. And he kind of just is like, hey, is there any way we can trade places just for a second, for like 10 minutes, and go back and forth into our different, you know, realities and see what our houses look like in reverse? That would be super cool. The other one agrees, and they decide to do it. And at first they're a little nervous. They can't be entirely sure if one can pass over to the other one's side. Everything goes swell. And that's kind of cool, the little caution built up there. So they jump to each other's side. They agree to meet back in like 10 or so minutes, and they do that, right? Well, he goes in, we follow our main guy from our reality, who goes to that world, and things are mostly fine, and then they're not. Uh, the wife of that husband is a little odd. It seems like they're about to have some kind of weird foursome group sex type of thing. She has, like, uh, two guys in the room who seem kind of nervous and kind of weirded out. She's wearing a red robe. The tension is really there. Again, the directing and the script and the acting, really solid for the most part, especially in the acting for these actors there. But it doesn't make up for the rest of VHS Viral, even though this one is the strongest of the shorts. It's still really weak compared to a lot of VHS 1, 2, and 94. So that's my stance on that. But I think for the most part, this is fairly entertaining. Moving along to the third and technically final short. Well, I guess it's really the fourth and final short. I'm not really sure. However you want to consider the wraparound a thing. This one's the final short you get. It is the absolute worst. It, it's called Bone Storm. And basically a group of skateboarding teens are going out to, like, Mexico or something, like the worst parts of Mexico. They have guns, they're drinking and everything. And these kids get into a situation while they're out filming videos uh, that involves them having to deal with a cult, essentially. And that is really stupid. Like, it's okay at first, you know? I can't stand the kids in the short. They're just awful. Maybe it's supposed to be realistic, I don't know, but it doesn't work for a movie. I hate the kids, I think they're awful, or young men, teens, whatever they are, young adults, they suck, I can't stand them. Not only are they bad actors, but you just can't stand whatever improv script nonsense they did for this movie. It's bad, and I'm embarrassed that it's part of the VHS franchise. I'm embarrassed for these people who made this. Um, and then, the way the cult story goes, by the end of that segment, is so awful. <laughs> so embarrassingly awful. I remember the first time I saw that, I laughed out loud, like a mean cackle type of laugh, like a wicked witch type of laugh. Uh, I'm a man, so I guess it's a warlock, I don't know. But anyway, I made fun of it like that because of how stupid it got. It's worse than having an idea of a magician in a short, which just so happens to be in the same movie. Very interesting how poorly that worked out, isn't it? Killed the franchise for like six years. Or what is it, 2014... 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Seven years. Seven years you did it. That you killed this franchise with garbage like this Bone Storm segment. Anyway, then you have the wraparound. As bad as Bone Storm was, then you get a really unsatisfying ending to the wraparound story about the ice cream truck. And then it ends. <laughs> and that's all it is to it. The character acting is really only solid 
in that story about the parallel monsters. Like I said, same thing with the writing. The writing in every other story is completely weak. That curiosity at the beginning of the ice cream truck one is okay. And then, like I said, it, it craps the bed. Um, the writing is not the strong suit of this movie. It was fine for VHS 1 and 2 for the most part. It's fine for VHS 94, but here... Nope. <laughs> nope. Moving along, though, to the look of the movie again. It feels cheap. It looks cheap. It looks like a, a GoPro movie. It doesn't look like a found footage movie the way the first one does. It doesn't have that decent documentary style that a lot of VHS 2 has. This one just feels like a GoPro or cell phone movie. It just, even though it maintains being found footage, a lot of these seem like they want to cheat and not be straight up found footage. That doesn't work for me. I think that's kind of lame. Uh, there is a ton of CGI. As I said, that ruins this tremendously. There's too much of it. There's not enough gore in this. There's really almost no gore in the movie. Now, uh, when there is, it's there and it's gone real quick. It's cut away from, it's directed away from very fast. This film feels like it was rushed out. Now, I know VHS 2 was rushed out because of the success of the first movie. That's fine, because there's quality into that for the most part. I have my flaws with it, but it's mostly a really solid one. This one feels not only rushed out, but manufactured. There's a difference. You know, you can be rushed out and be solid, like the Friday the 13th franchise. But when you manufacture something, that's a problem. And that's what VHS Viral is. It's just a corporate manufactured, let's make money off of this franchise type of stupid nonsense that they thought they could just make something off of the fans, and then you killed what we loved. <laughs> and this film series could have went on forever. People loved the first two so much when they came out. There is no way that it could have died this brutally <laughs> so quick after two years of being around. Uh, there's not really any music here. When there is, it's bad. <laughs> it's a really, really low-budget, low-tier trash Nothing to say about that. If I had to rate VHS Viral, which I don't own anymore, I might buy a copy of it someday if I can find it cheap for like two bucks on eBay and a shipping of like a couple of bucks, I might pick it up. If I can find it cheap, I would buy it for my collection again. Uh, because I'm a, a completionist, you know, I also need to buy VHS too, just so you know. I only have VHS 1 and 94, and I will own 99, God willing. Um, I hate this movie. I think it's awful. There's a couple of moments that make it worthwhile, just in that one segment I referred to, and the curiosity at the beginning with the wraparound. Other than that, I have, like, nothing that I care about with this movie. There's, like, one little throwback reference to the original movie, and that's it. If you had called this anything else, except for a VHS movie, it would be dead in the water, no one would have watched it, dead on arrival, 100%. It's garbage, it should be dead. No one likes this at all. I don't know a single VHS fan in real life or online that I've talked to personally that have said they like this garbage. This movie sucks. Uh, like I said, it has a few little pluses, but it ain't much. If I had to rate VHS Viral, the third movie of the franchise, on a five-star basis, I have immense problems with it. But I did at least enjoy one short, for the most part. The one about the, uh, what is it, Parallel Monsters? Whatever it was called. If I had to rate this one on a five-star basis... I'd give it a 2 out of 5 stars. That's very weak, but it is not the worst movie I've ever seen. But it is for sure the worst I've seen of this franchise, and I don't think anything Shudder could ever do, or anybody else could ever do, could come down to how underwhelming and rough and bad this movie was. Anyway, what are your thoughts on VHS Viral? I would love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section down below. What would you rate it? And stick around, because after I review these movies, and after VHS 99 comes out on Shudder, or wherever it's coming first, I will have an account, I will check it out, and then I'm going to rank all of these five movies together. Uh, but for now, hope you'll tune in, hope you'll subscribe and check it out. And thank you for watching, guys. I'm about to start up the reviews for the Halloween franchise after I watch a few more things. Stick around for that, too, if you like Halloween and horror movies and Michael Myers. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. God bless you. Goodbye.